Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Tutoria. And today we're introducing the Snowfall DLC. Now, this is a unique DLC because it's not going to do much for you if you're not in a winter map. That, that being said, 95% of what this DLC offers you is only available on a Snowfall map. So if you bought this DLC thinking, boy, I'm going to really change this city, it's going to be amazing, you're going to be sad about this DLC. All you're going to have access to when the game is in a, in a regular map, uh, so that is any of the maps outside of a Snowfall map, is the tram depot and the tram system, saunas, geothermal heating and boiler stations, which can help if you're in a temperate climate. It can help you uh, mitigate the spikes in electricity use that you would see, uh, because then the heating would come from those sources. Uh, and, and the road maintenance depot, which helps you kind of supercharge your roads and ensure that the maintenance is good. Besides that, nothing is going to be available to you. So we are going to use the Environmental Changer Plus mod to make this a winter build. And we will do that right now. Ah, there we go. The frigid palm trees of Tutoria. This is something that I was able to do by going ahead and installing that mod. And then when I load into my save, you change the base theme to winter. Now it tells you not to do this, but that's the only way that you're going to get a realistic uh, modification to a winter map. So now it is 100% a winter map. If you were to do this and you have a map with lots of palm trees, you might want to use a mod uh, that allows you to replace the trees. Um, something like Bob that would allow you to click on one of the trees and change them all out. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're not going to worry about that too much because we won't make this a permanent winter map. But we will use it as a winter map for a little while. And that's going to mean that we have some issues. So the very first thing that we're going to notice is when we come into our power, we now have a deficit. So let's pause this and discuss why we have a deficit. So the reason why we have this deficit is that we are now using electricity to produce heat. And we're going to need to do something about that. So if we pop, well, we can do two things. We can either pop into here into our policies and formalize that and say uh, only electric for heat, which will keep this condition. Uh, we won't have to do anything else. Uh, we could have extra insulation, which will keep the buildings warmer. You can see our temperatures plummeted below freezing. So 19 uh, degrees Fahrenheit would be negative zero or negative something uh, Celsius. So maybe maybe like negative three or something. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, but this is below freezing. So we're going to need to have our heat on. So the way that we could accomplish this is we can come into here. Now we're going to have this new heating tab underneath water, sewage and heating. And we can either install our boiler stations or our geothermal heating plants. So there are pros and cons to both of these. First of all, they do need water, so that's something to be aware of, and they do have a, 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 an upkeep cost. So the upkeep of the boiler station is $640 a week. It produces 120 megawatts of heat, and right now we need 552. This produces 80, a little bit less uh, uh, upkeep per week at 480. And when we look at the noise pollution, this is 75. This one is also 75, but this one also produces pollution. So I'm going to, to create a fairly significant uh, geothermal heating area uh, in the city. But before we do that, I do want to know what this policy for extra insulation will do. So let's pop into here. And now that our heating availability is up, let's resume the game and see how much this changes, if any at all. Okay, that's pretty significant. So we drop down to 4, 40, uh, 480. So we saved a couple of boilers there, or a couple of uh, heating plants. So we still have a need though, and we're still under our electricity availability. So let's go ahead, and we're gonna place some of these. Now, one of the reasons you might not wanna do this is that the moment you do this, you are going to use up some of your water, which Again, now we have a deficit in our water, and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna if we ever convert this back, we're gonna have issues. We also need to upgrade 
literally every single water pipe in the city to make this work. So I think we're gonna select one region to upgrade and maybe we'll take Hamilton and we'll say that this community decided to have its own heating system. Okay, so this area is now covered and because this is ugly and polluting, we're gonna extend this over a little bit and let's take a look at our terrain. <laughs> we're gonna need to get way up here. So just something to be aware of. And now I'm gonna put some of our geothermal heating plants up here. So I am gonna level this. These will get lumpy and bumpy and very ugly very quickly if we don't do that. So let's just pop through here. And that is the wrong height. So we'll select that road, pull it up again. And I think the road's just dropping, which is unfortunate because it's gonna to lead to some, some wonkiness. So let's be really careful about this. I'm using my slope tool here just to try to get this back a little ways. It's not working, so I'll grab this height and just pull along here until it's not cutting and looking crazy. And then we can feather it back a little bit with our slope terrain tool. That's much better. So let's place a couple of these here. So I'm gonna go with this geothermal heating plant so that we are not uh, basically creating a bunch of pollution in the area. So we will add these right here. And you can see they're very, very large. So we're not gonna get many of these in here. Then we'll need to connect this into our water system. And then one last look at the disaster of our terrain that we, or disaster that we've created in our terrain. We'll get that fixed. It's a little better looking. It's not perfect. I think this is gonna be one of those places where we can't let perfect be the enemy of good because this is going to be very difficult to, to make it look the exact same as this side. A little bit of cliffing's not too bad. I don't like that bump. So we'll just pull it out a bit further. And a lot of this is personal preference. Can you live with this? If you can, you're probably fine. So now that we've added this, this plant right here should produce 80 megawatts of heat. So we have five of them. So this will produce approximately 400 uh, megawatts of heat. So we're close to where we need to be. It does make me wonder if I could just eke out one more, I could really blanket the entire city in the geothermal heating. And when we see what happens here, now we're gonna pop up. We're now producing enough for most of the city. We've only connected up these areas that are orange. So I'm gonna go through right now and I'm not gonna make you watch me upgrade all of these. So we're gonna take just a brief moment to upgrade all of these and we'll come right back. Okay, so I have gone through and I have added heat pipes all throughout the city and you can see it doesn't reach all the way out here. That is simply because we do not have a strong enough boiler system. So we might address that. Um, you know, uh, there's one reason why I think this wasn't included in the base game um, as as uh, basically a seasons changer. First of all, the difficulty in making that season change occur. And then second of all, it's very tedious to go through and upgrade all your pipes. So do know that that is a thing that if you're going to take your city and make it into a winter build, which you can only do on the PC, if you're going to do that, it is a very tedious process, not for the faint of heart. And I had lots of problems as I was going through and doing this. So I did want to run the city so I continue to make money while I'm spending all this money. I'm actually not anymore. One of the reasons for that is I had to go through here and crank the power and water because I was too high. I was at 125 before, which isn't great. So we'll take that back down to 125 and I'll show you what we were looking at. We were looking at being at an equilibrium with our electricity with our heat, we have a deficit, and with our water, we are basically on the edge. So we're gonna need to do something about all of that right now. And what we're gonna do is add a ocean conversion plant. These produce a magnificent amount of power. So we're looking at, at, at 480. This will give us the ability to, to breathe a little bit. I don't know of a great place for this. You might just place it off from here or something of that nature or maybe even to sneak it over here. It's not really a lot of excellent places to put this in the city, to be honest with you. Maybe right here. 
Oh, so it's mad that we don't have a road connection. Let's see if I sneak it over here if that counts. <laughs> okay, apparently it's okay with the monorail. So that's going to give us our overhead on our electricity, so we can take that budget down. And now we need more water. So we need water uh, capacity and sewage. So I am going to add another inland water treatment plant. I believe that's what we had over here. Eco advanced inland water treatment plant. And we have a berm here, so that's going to be a problem. But it produces so much less pollution. We might just live with a little bit of pollution in this area. And we'll clean this up a bit. That is pretty ugly. I, I, I can readily admit that. And yeah, that slope is absolutely egregious. So we're going to take a quick moment. Not something that is totally necessary, but something that I think is totally fine to do. We are going to regrade this. The height of realism right here as we do this. We're going to grab that top slope. And then we'll just pull that up from our low. And then we'll take a normal road to make that connection to keep it straight and then upgrade this to our highway. And I'm going to add sound walls just so that there's a barrier here. And then from that, we are going to try to grade this out and make it look a little bit nicer. This is going to be a real challenge. Uh, let's take our let's take our strength down a little bit. And then I'm going to dezone this. It's falling down the hill. It's, it's kind of a bad look. So we can get rid of that, and then we'll connect these up. And some of you might be thinking, why even bother connecting these up? I don't know if these need a heat connection or not, um, but I figure better safe than sorry. The one thing to keep in mind is these are $100 uh, a cell, 20, uh, 20 cents upkeep. The regular water pipe, I believe, yeah, it's 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 way less. Twenty dollars a cell, eight cents upkeep. So already our water system is dramatically more expensive than it was, all because we added the boilers to this. And now we need to also think about maybe another water tower. Let's see if we can sneak one of those over here. And I think two is what we want to aim for. So let's see if we can find another good spot. Don't want any pollution. This seems to be okay, so we'll add another one over here as well. And that'll fix our water problem, so now we can come through here and get this down as well. We'll see where that leaves us with everything. Leaves us kind of on the edge again. And with our electricity, we're in the same spot. Thing is, the city's just big at this point, and you're gonna be on the edge unless you're way over building, and I just don't really wanna do that right now, so. We will live with it not being 100% perfect. So it is very, very bright in the winter builds. We can certainly go through. I do have ultimate level of detail and you might want to go through and even change your global or ambient light intensity to give yourself a, a slightly darker build that maybe doesn't burn your eyes so much. <laughs> so things to think about also changing your LUT. So Again, I'm on PC, so this is something I can do. I have Photorealistic LUT uh, by Reaper. There are any number of LUTs that you could try. You could try Neutral, and you can see that that does some things. Uh, so a number of things. I normally use Reaper Real Light Blue, which honestly doesn't look bad either. Maybe I'll just stick with it. So there we go. Gives us some of the color that we're used to. So interestingly, over here, it is still mad about the boilers. And my guess is that is 100% our boiler availability not being very high. Let's see if we can improve that. Let's add a couple more boilers. And again, this is retrofitting a map. You're going to need a ton of capacity. So it's just something to be aware of. It's not an easy process. And we're only halfway done retrofitting the map. There is still snow dumps and things of that nature that we need to add to this build. So I'm going to come through here. I should probably be using these industrial roads and then we'll add a couple more. So we need at least two more geothermal heating plants. Maybe we'll go with some boilers just to show you what they look like. These obviously take up significantly less space. They are only producing, they are producing 120. These are producing 80. So there is an advantage to these. The size is dramatically smaller, but you're polluting as well. So. I don't want to pollute, so we're not going to do that. We will go ahead and just really use a ton of space on these boilers. 
and then we will finish out our grading. This should be it for us as far as these go. There we go, and we'll pop back in here and look at that. Finally, heating availability. Our water is now fine. Our heat, our electricity is great. Now, we enabled this policy for extra insulation, and I want to take a look at what that's doing to us. So this is going to reduce our tax income for all of our buildings because of the extra insulation, but we're going to save a little bit. So I want to come in here and, ooh, I know one thing that has been bugging a lot of people is I forgot to raise taxes in the highest densities. We'll get to that. There we go. So we're going to boost this up. We see that our tax income is not very good right now. We're turning along. It's positive, but we could do better. So I'm going to let this reach equilibrium for a minute. I'll turn the speed up and see where we're at. Kind of all over the place. That's airport DLC and industry is doing that to us. But we can see it's a low of five and an upper end of 60. Now, if we turn this off, we're in here. So we'll pop in here. Let's look at our heating. And then we turn off extra insulation. Our heat consumption goes through the roof. So that, uh, that added about 200 megawatts to what we need. We have the availability with our electricity and we'll see what this does to our weekly income. And it seems like it's settling in the 30s. Um, so, you know, in the upper, upper levels, it's staying there a little bit more as well. So maybe there's some value in attempting to just leave this and to, to, to make up for this. Let's pollute a little bit. We will add in our boiler system. We'll have a couple of these. One thing to keep in mind is that your heating availability and consumption, uh, your, your heating consumption is going to change based on the temperature. When we jumped up to 800, that was when our city was in a, in a very cold place. So let's pop a couple of these in. And the consequence of that is going to be that now when we look at our pollution, this is a polluting building. That said, we are next door polluting industry, so just place these things appropriately and you should be okay. Don't get this next to your water tower. We gotta keep a little bit of separation there. And we should be okay. But now when we're looking at our heat, we have way more production than we need. So that's a good problem to have in my estimation. So we'll keep it that way. The extra insulation policy is certainly one that you could use. Uh, no electricity for heat if you just want to make sure that you never have any electricity being used. I think that's a pretty bad idea because <laughs> you're going to see the tax income plummet and right here and you'll see people leave and die. So you don't want that. And then only electricity for heat. You know, if you don't want boilers and geothermal, that's a way to go. In reality, you know, I'm, I'm the son of a of a heating man who installed furnaces. Geothermal is something that would be used at an individual building level unless you're Iceland so or or some maybe some Scandinavian com countries. But uh, it's certainly not something that, at least in my area, is very common. It's usually isolated to one individual building. So it is a little weird for me to, to, to see these. Um, so but but it's a thing. So here we go. So with that, the next thing we can take a look at is uh, some of the other amenities that come with this build. Okay, so with this DLC, you get a couple of other things. You get the ability to have snow uh, removal. So that's something that we want to take, uh, take, take stock of. So if we take a look, we have no coverage. The condition, they're clear basically everywhere because we haven't had any weather. Now I'm going to pop in and let's just go into our gameplay and we'll use dynamic weather because that's going to be the real star of the show right now in in being able to use these snow dumps because right now we don't have any any snow anywhere and once we get it we're going to need some of these dumps so we'll we'll check on that soon and we'll go over to the road maintenance depot which is basically the exact same thing but for road condition and what you can see is that the normal state is apparently a, a, a pavement condition of zero. <laughs> I don't know. So pavement condition is something that you generally look at uh, for roads and this gives an approximation kind of normal versus boosted. It's kind of a weird way of looking at it in my, in my opinion. Uh, that said, it's an interesting mechanic. The thing you're gonna wanna think about when you're locating these 
these buildings uh, they produce no noise or pollution. Again, that's a little weird, uh, considering there's there's road maintenance trucks coming out of there. They they are going to act like a police station in terms of coverage or other buildings like that. So you're going to want to make sure that you have good access to an arterial, but don't place it right on there, because this thing is going to load multiple vehicles directly onto here. So this is 10 maintenance trucks it's going to place right on here. I'm going to use a bit of eminent domain, place it right here. This road has excellent access to this highway, and you can see what this has done. Is it's basically lit up this entire area. So we're gonna do something very similar over here. Where can we fit this in? Truthfully, I might just want to add a local road to, no, no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> we are going to add this. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll try to get this. The problem is, I know that the zoning over here is not compatible with this. So we have residential and that's just not the way it would work. We're going to take some liberties and place it right here anyway. This is a good location because it's not loading directly onto this collector, but it's right there and it has access to the highway, which means it can get further. So we're really blanketing a good portion of the city at this point. We're going to add another one right over here. And again, we'll place that with great access to a collector, which will mean that they can go all throughout the city. And then over here, we're going to just need to place it in a neighborhood that does happen. There we go. And then we need one serving monument circle. Not again, not a great place for this. We're going to place this behind all of our uh, everything happening back here in the lower density using a little bit of eminent domain. We'll take out one building, but it'll still rebuild as a high density building. And this has good access to basically this entire area. We could have also snuck this back here near all the industrial stuff. And there's certainly value and merit to that. And maybe we'll have another one just in case. And what this is going to do is if you take a look, it is going to improve the speed of vehicles on these roads. So they're going to circulate around. And what you'll see is that these roads are going to go from red to green and when they're green vehicles are going to go on there faster so that means that they'll be much more efficient in transporting the goods and it also means that your traffic flow will improve so your traffic flow with the winter dlc will decline if you have poor roadway conditions and it'll improve if they're better so now with this we still do not have any issues with our snow so i am going to let this go for just a second until we get some snow okay and now we have some snow so this is going to cause some problems for us so if we pop in here and we look at our condition what you'll start to see is that these are going from yellow they're getting a little bit redder so i'm going to let this completely turn red and one of the reasons for that is we have a number of new uh unique buildings that come with this. I believe it's something like 13 that come with this particular DLC right here, all the snowfall buildings. So the ice hockey arena, you need to have five boilers for the ski resort. You need to fill a snow dump uh, for the spa. You need to have 1 million units of snow collected right here for the snow castle restaurant. You need to I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I've already unlocked it. I believe that this one, and I will double check this right now, for the Snowcastle restaurant, you have to have 200,000 units of snow on the road. So we managed to do that already. The sleigh ride, you need to use only boiler stations uh, for the snowboard area. We're looking at weekly education expenses that are really high. We could probably fudge that one by really increasing our spending on education. Santa Claus workshop. We need to have tram lines. That one's pretty easy to fudge. Uh, geothermal heating for the Christmas tree only. And then for the uh, the skating rink, uh, we need the skating rink to get the Igloo Hotel. And the skating rink, I'm curious. That's right under here, under the winter parks. And this is the other thing that we're going to get with this. So we get all of these unique parks now. So the Snowman Park, Ice Sculpture Park, Sledding Hill, Curling Park, Skating Rink, Ski Lodge, Cross Country Skiing Park, and a Fire Pit. So 
Uh, this is what we're gonna need to be able to, to unlock that that, that final uh, DLC. That I that 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 the final uh, building, the skating rink right here is what would do it. So we're gonna add some of these things in. I am gonna try to contain them because the moment I switch back from a winter build to the normal tropical build, those buildings are gonna disappear unless I actually use a mod to keep them in the in the in the game. And that's the winter buildings unlocker plus the European buildings unlocker, which is a depreciated mod. So it's kind of a kind of a mess. It does still work, but it's not ideal. So looking at our roads, this is the condition that you get when you don't have snow dumps. So it's not great. And when we look at our traffic, Apparently the traffic doesn't care. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. When we take a look at our condition, it's getting pretty bad everywhere, which is interesting because I'm sure the game isn't simulating what really happens. We had a snow day not that long ago. And what happened is that everyone decided to stay home <laughs> because it was the roads were far too dangerous to go out and do anything. So we're going to just extend these roads out to try to make our population threshold. We are not anywhere near that yet. And we're going to have the roads start to change what they're doing a bit. So what I'm doing is this was pretty, you know, irregular suburban in character. I'm just straightening things up a little bit. And this is going to end in a regular shape. It's just going to kind of remain that. There's not a lot we can do without demolishing a bunch of existing buildings, which just isn't really going to happen. So we'll come through here. We've made a couple of changes, extended some things a bit, and in general, I think made this have a, a fairly reasonable pattern for a place that's going to rapidly develop. And that is what's going to happen here. Let's go ahead and improve our terrain. We've got some dipping. We didn't respect our topography entirely, but I think it's going to be good enough for what we're looking to do. And I owe an apology to the French. I definitely disrespected this arch here, which is the uh, Arc de Triomphe, which I'm, I'm sure I just butchered. But <laughs> I did not preserve view corridors. So we're going to do that right here get rid of some of these buildings so that we have majestic views up to this. You can see our snowy palm trees just the way they were meant to be. So perfect. So let's go through here and I'll have a couple of blocks. These will be some neighborhood blocks where you could walk through and grab an ice cream. The rest of this, almost all of this will be residential in nature. We will add a couple of blocks where you could grab something to eat, little Square, you see those sometimes in older urban neighborhoods where it's a corner store or something of that nature. So we'll have a couple of those right here. And then we'll come through and just add in a whole bunch of residential. Now I'm sure that we need to take a look at some of our availability for our city services. Healthcare is not great in this area. Neither is our fire protection and our police protection. I'm going to try to resolve some of this by making another roadway connection. The other thing, when we take a look at our school availability, this I am going to resolve right here. We'll add in another elementary school with an excellent view of the highway. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll leave it there for now. I don't want to overload this area with high schools. Again, remembering that when we took a look at this area last time, most of our population was not in this was not growing in this area to reach our last population threshold we actually managed to meet it with our existing city we are going to use some eminent domain to place some of the parks in here so not exactly the height of realism but i think it's going to be very helpful for us in this particular um, with what we're doing right now so let's pop through and take a look at our parks and I want to add many of these to this area because it'll make it easy for us to replace them in the future. So let's go ahead and we'll start with our first met one. It's a snowman park. Never seen anything like this, but I'm very curious. So it's a cute little park with some snowmen in it. 
a lot of them. <laughs> so neat little park. Next up, we have the ice sculpture. So this one is four by four, similar to the last one. We'll pop that right here. And it has a majestic horse surrounded by reindeer and penguins. I like it. I like it a lot. Then we move on to the sledding hill. This is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's only five by five. So let's go ahead. We'll pop that one right here and take a look at that. So it's an artificial hill, which is interesting. It has a grill, place to grab some food. You can come up, walk up. That is a lot of steps. And then you come and sled down. Nice little asset. Then we have this curling park. Now this one's bigger. So I'm trying to, to figure out the size of this. It's a little more challenging. So it looks like it is about six wide and maybe seven long for this one. So we don't really have, we don't have a regular block that size. So we'll just pop it right here and we'll take a look. And it's curling. Curling's really big around where I'm at. In fact, there were some Olympic curlers from this area. So very, very cool. Love to see that in the build as well. Skating rink. This is, uh, looks like it's four by six. So I like that there are so many different sizes. That's one of my critiques of the, the parks that come in the base game is it seems like they're either very, very small or very, very large. So you come through here, it would fit in anywhere, really a downtown or out in the suburbs. Very, very cool. And now we're getting to some of the bigger steps. So we've got this ski lodge. I don't know how appropriate this is out here. It's kind of small. So this is three by four. We're going to place this right here. <laughs> We're going to ski into our lake, apparently. It's nice. It's pretty small. So I guess keep that in mind. Uh, but it kind of has a log cabin-y vibe going on. So that's pretty, pretty neat. And that goes along with this cross-country skiing park, I guess. This is massive. That is neat. So let's pop this one in. We'll extend this road out and then we'll pop this one in. We'll need to fix this, but cross country skiing. So this makes total sense to me. In the area I grew up, there was lots of cross country skiing, very flat areas. And of course I place it on a place that's fairly hilly. So <laughs> doesn't work great. We can fix that though. We can make areas flat. That's easy enough. There we go. Now, the, the shame of these is they are using those old vanilla trees. And when we come in and we take a look at what we have available to us now with some of our newer stuff, I bet you if we take this live oak, it's okay. Right here, the horse chestnut looks a little bit better. They're all completely white, which is something that you see with some of the assets that aren't really meant to be in the winter, but they're taken there. And that makes me wonder... This one looks pretty darn good, the cottonwood, which is a tree that, you know, we do have some of those in, in colder areas. The generic pine tree is one that it, it's a little surprising to me that it doesn't look nicer. It's okay. This honestly looks pretty darn good, uh, but it really it's, it's all personal opinion. Right here, we've got uh, some of our boreal pines. Those look pretty darn good, uh, but they're very tall. So something to keep in mind. There we go. That is a very large asset. It's uh, it's very, very nice as well. And then finally, we have our fire pit. And this is going to be something that is really special. You could place this in a number of areas. I almost wish I would have placed this here. We're going to do it. We'll relocate this one, use some eminent domain so that we can place our fire pit right in the center of this neighborhood. Be a very special place. You could, if you put some pads around here. I'm curious if we can clip to this. That seems like a missed opportunity. Uh, I, I can't clip to this anywhere. So it's just that front entry point. And when you take a look at it, you can see the path there and there are no other path connections. So kind of a missed opportunity. If you want to be able to line up the trees, I think what we're looking at is these conifers. So we could certainly come through here and fill this out and make it look a little bit better and not so square. So there you go. So now it feels like a bigger park that just happens to have a fire pit in the middle of it. So fits the character just a little bit better if that is something that you're looking to do. And then where this DLC really shines is right here with some of our unique buildings. So we have the Snow Castle restaurant. 
another massive building. Let's take a look at this. So this, this is neat. So Winter Diner kind of has a, you know, kind of has a, a medieval times kind of vibe going, going, going there. Um, this kind of, this reminds me of a movie that I watched with my kids recently. I can't think of the name of it. Um, but basically the dad passed away. They used some, uh, magic to bring him back and he was only halfway there. Um, and they go into a restaurant that looks similar to this. Long story short. <laughs> so if you know what that movie is, let me know in the comments. It's going to bug me. I can't think of what it is. So we don't have the ability to use the rest of these. The spa hotel, interestingly is what we needed for the igloo hotel. So we need, it looks like we need to construct a whole bunch of things to get that. So the spa hotel, yeah, we need snow collected, which shouldn't be a problem. For the ski resort, we need to, the ski resort, we need to fill one snow dump. So let's get working on that. So we'll come back in here, we'll go into our roads, do our road condition and look at our snow dumps. So the condition of the roads, it got better. <laughs> <laughs> That's bizarre. That makes absolutely no sense to me. I, I, is it still snowing? No? Okay, I can force some snow because we have ultimate eye candy. So I can just force it to snow. That's something obviously in vanilla that you can't do. But that's one of those things that I love bringing into even a vanilla build because it gives me a little bit more control, makes recording a little bit easier. And as you can see now, I'm able to force the roads to be absolutely horrendous. So now I can throw in some snow dumps. Same rules here as that as you would have with the with the road maintenance facilities. And I'm curious, it's doing nothing for traffic flow, which I think is pretty disappointing because Snow absolutely is an impediment with traffic. So with these, you will get 10 vehicles. It's going to act like a dump, except that it'll melt the snow over time. Uh, so it will melt. And I'm guessing that's what's happening on the roads too. If you don't have snow dumps, snow does melt off roads. But if you didn't clear any snow, it would take so long. <laughs> the snow is melting off the roads in my city today and it's melting because uh we had we had a warm day and they, they were able to you know really take care of most of the snow removal in other days so normally snow dumps will be parking lots or they'll push it into the water or something like that depending on where you're at i know that some cities will just straight up push it into a lake like you know lake michigan here uh or they will just keep it in a big parking lot that's unused um we're gonna have these dedicated snow dumps so now we're seeing these little snow indicators still not doing anything to our traffic if anything our traffic's getting better so that's interesting i want to see how this terraforms it actually does a pretty good job so you can place these on pretty hilly terrain and not worry about it at all and what they look like is big parking lots where you would add snow. So pretty re reasonable and realistic there. The slope's too steep to put it here. Remember, we have 10 vehicles loading from here. So keep that in mind. When we take a look at our condition, it is going through and clearing these up. Our coverage areas, again, are best served by adding them to areas where we have great access to highways and large capacity roads. I'm going to break my rules here and I'm going to add this right here to this collector. We're going to see, or to this arterial, we'll see what this does. I think it's, it might not be a big deal for this one. We only have 10 vehicles and it's signalized right here, highway over here. So we're right out on, onto the highway. It would be more problematic on this side because it would left out into this traffic. So right out's okay. It's still not great when it's left and you can see it's backing things up a little bit, but I think we're going to be okay because of the signal. So we will live with that one. Then over here, we are going to add this. I'd love to add this over here. It's not going to work because we have this curve. This is a one way loop, so it's not ideal. I think we are going to add this to this collector again, breaking the rule and what are rules if we cannot break them from time to time. We'll scoot that over. And I wonder, it might've looked a little better with the terraforming 
Yeah, it, it, it actually covers up some of that madness that we were experiencing with the terraforming. And we are going to need to extend our power lines over before I forget. So we've got water there. So interestingly, this does need water. Maybe for the restroom and the heat heater inside of this little maintenance building. And now when we look at our condition, it's improving some. Our coverage is pretty good. It's not great over here or near Monument Circle. It's just such an awkward building to have in a densely populated area. So I am going to take out one home here or one building and we'll sneak one back here and now they'll have access to most of this area we take a look coverage is pretty darn good now conditions not great it'll improve over time so there we go that's prob i don't love to overdo it with these i guess we could put one over by the prison too if we wanted to improve coverage a bit more Ooh, that's interesting it looks like we have a disconnected water tower i don't know how long that's been like that it's be it's probably been a while so that's going to help us out with our water availability okay so now we're breaking all the rules and i this one i can fix so i'm going to do so we'll add a road down there and that will allow us we'll keep this signal so you can either go to the prison or the snow dump and we'll have excellent access all over the place now with our snow fa snow facilities this might actually be a pretty good place to have a road maintenance facility as well great access to the city so we'll take it we look at our condition pretty bad still everywhere it will improve with time so with that i think i want to focus on the growth of the city again because that is our primary concern let's also take a look what do these buildings do for land value you can see it's not great that is the one takeaway is that these are, are not boosting our land values as much as some other buildings. If we take a look, we haven't unlocked anything else, so we can't add anything else to, to improve the values. What we need to do now is work on meeting some of the needs of our city, which is commercial and industrial slash office. So I like to come back and continue to densify the urban core. So we'll just pop through here and increase our density in a targeted way. So what I like to do is look at some of these areas. We've got lower density stuff here. I wish I could just level this up, like just come on here and, and just click it. But if you right mouse click quickly or you leave it paused, so that's another way you can just pause it and then you can select all of these areas very quickly and just right mouse click, left mouse click. And you can, you can go pretty quickly with minimal issues. If you don't go fast enough, you'll end up with artifacts. So if I come through and I upgrade these, you can see that I, I sometimes miss some. So not ideal. And then we'll come through and do the exact same thing with offices, extend some of these out. And you see the artifacts I'm talking about when a portion of the zonable area didn't get zoned, it does not retain its zoning. You might want to add that in there. That's totally a you call though, not a me call. So I will, uh, it's just a bit of advice. You can do whatever you want. For me, it just, uh, it doesn't really matter because it's probably never going to fill in. I just think it looks nicer. So <laughs> I do it. I it's, it's, it's one of those weird quirks that I have. And then it looks like we have one more block right here that could use a little bit more. I'm just mixing my, my zoning in. I think that's very helpful. I'll give people the opportunity to walk to work, uh, to bike to work, to get to work on transit. Uh, when things are in close proximity, people will tend to walk more, take transit or bike. And we have an excellent biking network here. Look at that. It just, it's one of those weird things. As these things were dezoning, you see that it threw in some random zoning there just, uh, just for kicks, I guess. So we have significant office demand and I'm wondering if we, we shouldn't meet some of that down here. So we've had this area that is heavily forested. We could leave it like that. What I'm going to do is extend this road down here and create a little office park in this area. So the way that we're going to do that is we'll try to mirror some of these roadway patterns with minimal connections. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's the general office park vibe is just keep it minimal. 
do what you can to keep people inside of the office park. I worked in an office park in Woodland Hills, California. And one of the things that was interesting about that office park is something that I'll, I'll attempt to, to simulate right now. So first of all, I'll come through here. And this will be a difficult turn to mimic. You could certainly come through, probably just use my freeform tool and make a connection. Actually, the curved road tool will do a better job. There we go. So it, it, w the office park I was at, they actually had a gate, so we could certainly do that. We could add that right here at the road. Uh, of course, the gates are too big, so maybe we'll skip it, but that is something that you could do. And then we'll preserve this little environmental feature as the centerpiece of this development. Let's just test how many across this is. This is 12 units, so I need to go up six and over six. We can use the freeform tool to finish. There we go. More or less straight and then a road coming through there. So that's all of our zoning. We'll leave a little bit of gap through here. Kind of ugly, but not unsurprising. We'll add in some paths through here so someone could go for a walk on their lunch break. We'll keep angle on. This isn't a path that's really going anywhere. It's just a recreational path that someone could use on their lunch break to get a little bit of exercise, which is certainly something that those companies are thinking about as they want to encourage their employees to walk um, some of it for insurance reasons and some of it because that's what that's the type of amenities that employees are looking for these days and you'll hear it all the time from those sorts of developers that that's what they want so there we go we've added in some walking facilities we'll do the same thing over here and they, these developers are going to develop high density residential along the park acknowledging that it's an excellent place for it kind of a live work opportunity We'll have a little bit of commercial flanking this corridor down here. And the reason we're placing this here is this is going to have the highest traffic volumes. And you would figure that if you are a commercial developer, that is exactly what you want. High traffic volumes. We'll add in some buffers of offices down here. We'll leave a spot of zoning so we can extend this down with another collector, something to take advantage of this. And then we'll have a significant amount of office space interior to here. Uh, this is an office park after all. And then I just wanna make sure I don't zone in here so I don't inadvertently destroy the rocks or the trees that are inside of there. I just added some residential near the park to keep the most valuable land for uses that uh, are really more particular about their their spatial situation. Offices obviously care, but it's a, it's a little different. You, you know, you might see an office in less than prime location. So there we go, blankets this entire area. And we're gonna speed this up and let this run for a minute as this builds out. Okay, so we've got this area filling in and we still aren't reaching our population threshold. So what that's telling me is that we are having some issues either with our healthcare system, our education, or just our land values aren't very good. So over here, one thing that I think is pretty apparent when you look around is that our education system is not what it should be. So I'm gonna go through and add some schools in here that's gonna immediately boost the land values and get these buildings leveled up. So if we take a look, I'm just curious. I want to see if there's a, we'll take a look at, yeah, we've got lower land values there, lower over here. This is a shame because we've got parks and transit over here. So that shouldn't be the case. We take a look at leisure. Interestingly, we're not seeing great connections over here, up here. So these are some of our issues. So let's take care of some of those things now. And that's how we'll reach our population threshold. That is gonna be a huge key in this. And some of that's gonna be overbuilding our education. So that is one of the unfortunate things. I could certainly extend transit. It's just kind of weird the way that the game handles transit with schools. So I don't do it often. It's just a regular bus that, that takes anyone where they wanna go and it happens to be a school bus. The coverage rate radius 
for the school is not great either. So it's something to keep in mind. Over here, we are gonna add an elementary school. Why don't we add that right in the park? We can get away with that. And the other thing is our roadway network through here is so broken that we're not receiving some of the benefits. So we're gonna call a mulligan. We'll extend this road through. That'll add a significant pedestrian connection through here as well as a roadway connection, which is really what I care about, that roadway connection through here because that'll allow our school radius to improve just a bit, reach all of the homes in there. Let's look at some of the other residential areas in our community. Still not great over here. Same with high schools, not great. We'll add another high school. I think we're mostly flat over here, some decent distance. And then you can see the coverage, not great over here probably use another high school so we'll use a bit of eminent domain what I'll actually do that looks pretty bad I don't know when that happened but I don't like it we'll add our high school there and then we'll clean this up this terraforming disaster then we added in a row of pine trees back here to humanize it so that you're not looking at a cliff face that's just a sheer cliff face uh, a little bit better. And obviously I'd love to go through and, and hide all of this. Really difficult to see. So this is a critique of this DLC. It's difficult to see what you're doing with landscaping because they just kind of throw a winter texture over all the assets, which I commend them for because, you know, it could be worse. We could just not have any texture over this, but it just starts to look a little weird. And it's hard to say how any of this stuff is going to look when we convert this back to being a tropical build, but I guarantee you it's not gonna look perfect. It's gonna look a little, little, little weird. There we go, a little bit nicer, and we've even used some high vegetation that happens to look tropical, so there we go. And this has not done what we would hope that it does for everything, and that's because we need more parks. So I'm not gonna add in any of these winter parks anywhere uh, besides this little area that I've added it, we are going to add some more in in areas of low land value. So we'll just look through here and use some eminent domain or sneak them in where we can. Uh, one of my favorites to do that with is the, both the tropical garden, which is a really funny asset to use right now. We could certainly sneak that in to the school area or the Japanese garden, which interestingly I don't have. That must come with the Japanese content creator pack. So I just don't realize that some of these are available to me then. Looks like look, we, we do have a couple more assets, interestingly, in the tourism. So the fishing pier looks like it's wintry now. We also have a snowmobile track, and I missed that one. So why don't we add some of these over here in our winter area? This is going to need to terraform. Yeah, that looks absolutely terrible, unless it's on a flat area. So this makes me think of Eagle River. And when we slow it down at a reasonable pace, you can see that is neat. Yeah, that reminds me of Eagle River, Wisconsin. Very, very cool. And let's pop back in here. We've got this ice hockey rink. There we go. Hockey. And the fishing pier, I think this is just a regular fishing pier with just the, the, a texture on it. We can pop that here next to all of our fishing harbors, our fishing docks, the ice, uh, the algae farm, uh, and a shellfish harbor. There we go. So there we go. We've got the, the fishing pier right there, boosting up the land values where we don't need it to happen. And let's see, that doesn't unlock anything for us. We're still waiting on things to unlock. So let's go back to placing parks. I am going to add in some small parks We'll add dog parks. Everyone loves a dog park. And we'll sneak some of these back by our university. It looks like we have some buildings that disappeared anyway, which is curious. I don't know what that is, what that would have been. My guess, oh, I do know what this is, and I'm guessing they're no longer available. Interesting. So we lost our basketball courts. They're not available in the winter DLC. So something to keep in mind, 
That what I was unaware of. So we'll replace it with things that will disappear or not, that won't disappear. So we've got this Paradox Plaza, a weird spot for it next to the high school, along with a dog park. <laughs> guess we'll raise our land values up. So I guess another thing to keep in mind is you might lose some things like that, which will lower your land values and make it difficult for you to level up. So let's go through. We're going to add some dog parks to try to get our land value up. And we might need to zone even more to get to where we need to be today or just let this run for a minute. And you get a dog park. And you get a dog park. Everybody gets a dog park. Even the office park gets a dog park. Everyone loves it. Everyone's happy. Everyone likes a dog park. Over here, that's a great spot for a dog park. There's a missing park there. Why not a dog park? And over here, again, another missing park. So many parks that are missing, that's going to prevent us from leveling up. Glad that we figured that out because it could have been a significant drag on the city. So at least we've worked that out. Over here, same deal. Needs more parks. Gets a dog park. There you go. That makes everyone thrilled. And right here, we'll take away your house in favor of a dog park. Dog park. And dog park. So now that we've added all these dog parks, everyone everyone wants to move here. So why don't we just continue building up here? We'll add some more residential a couple blocks back. We are going to need another way to get in here now that we've added all of this. So we'll add a road connection right there and go a block back. Send this all the way back. Use some eminent domain on that house. The good of the city. It's not the most creative roadway layout, but it's going to do the trick. What we're trying to do is just have an orderly and quick development pattern. This is definitely both of those. Now I'm upgrading this so that the roads get uh, so that we get zoning all the way up the road. Otherwise, it was preventing us from getting that zoning, and that's that's an issue. And then we'll go here at our pipes underneath our roads, where they belong, our heat pipes. And then I am going to, again, let this run for a minute so that we can start to fill in our city. Okay, and after waiting about 10 minutes, uh, we finally have reached our population threshold. So what this tells me is that there, we, we still have a ton of stuff that needs to fill in. We've got some issues. We've got heating issues again. So that's one of the reasons why you don't put on that all, all electric policy that uh, we were talking about, because that is that heating is being met by electricity. Um, and that's, that's something that you're going to want to make sure is still possible. So what we've seen is this entire area is filled in. When we take a look, our land values have normalized and improved in some of the places where we have the parks. Some of these parks, like the Curling Park, not doing a ton for our land value, which is pretty unfortunate. And when we look at our new area down here, kind of the same story. And we're just not seeing the level of advancement just yet. That'll get better with time. We do have the amenities nearby. It just takes a while. You've got to be patient. I am curious. Now, our healthcare situation might be part of our issue. So we just, we're not really well blanketed in all areas. So popping through here and adding another health clinic. That could be a benefit right there. Death care, we do have a lot of deceased citizens. And when we take a look, this might be something that we want to take a look at what's going on with our birth rate, our death rate. There's a huge spike there. Something happened, and that could be people dying because of cold. So when you're seeing 500 people dying at once, we had a huge birth spike there as well. I'm not sure why that happened. So we're going to need to keep an eye on that. And that's the sort of things that you can encounter when you switch your build to, you know, a new type of build reasonably. So all things to keep an eye on because there's something clearly wrong uh, that can cause those sorts of issues to occur. That said, we have normalized now, and I'm pleased with things uh, the way things have turned out, and I hope that you've enjoyed this build. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so, and I will see you in the next one, but not before we have a brief city tour. Take care.
and bye-bye.